I'm welcoming viewers around the world and viewers all over the social media. My name is Ronald Bernard, and I am the host for the show called Dialogue with the Candidate. Dialogue with the Candidate is a segment in which that we have people who are running for office. They come to the show and they share about their political agenda, their plan, the strategy in order to improve people's life. So we are fortunate today to have with us uh, Natasha Clerger, who's running for city council at large for Randolph. Re-election. Uh, hi, re hi, how are you doing? <laughs> Good. Thank you for being here. And also we have Jesse Goodman. Gordon. 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 How are you doing? Great, thank you. And I'm a challenger for town council at large. Okay. Thank you, both of you, for accepting the invitation. and Thank you for having us. <laughs> You're very welcome. And... Uh, we're going to educate and inform the public about um, your plan and what you're doing. So as we always say, ladies first, how about Natasha? You, can, you are currently the city council mm -hmm. at large. And if you don't mind, you can talk about what you have done so far during the two years and what is the future plan. Let me start by saying thank you to MCTV because uh, I remember two years ago when I was running for the first time, you guys embraced me, you helped me out. I had a great interview that went around the world and that interview gener generated a lot of support for me and I can say you guys contributed in getting me elected. Thank so you. thank you so much for that. Um, yes, I've been um, a town councillor since November uh, actually, I took office January 2018. 18, 2018. Thank you, Jesse. Uh, so for a little bit of almost two years now. And um, you know what? I think it, it's a call. You can't be um, in the political world, especially me who is not a politician. I, I, I have to set it straight. I am a public servant and uh, I grew up like that. And after my eight years of service in the military, so I felt the need to keep on going and, and helping people. That, that's a passion to me. Um, what did I accomplish other than um, serving the community on a daily basis? Because I remember campaigning, I promised them uh, a few A's like accountability, availability, you know, um, accessibility. And that's what I've been doing. Number one, my cell phone never changed and it's on everybody's, uh, it's public, okay. first of all. And number two, I uh, attended over 117 different events. Jesse and I, we were counting and we could not believe how is it physically possible in less than two years to have been, having been in so many events. So that's the commitment, that's the uh, accountability I wanted to give. I'm, I'm the only counselor who never missed any town council meeting, none of them. So it's, it, it was important for me because all the votes are important. There is no small vote, no big <laughs> votes. So I was elected to serve the people. I have to be there when the people need me to vote on uh, issues or resolution or what, whatever. Uh, I was at certain point the chair of the uh, public safety subcommittee on the town council, which I'm very proud of. Um, I didn't have much support, I can say, from other colleagues uh, who probably wanted me to fail or wanted me, I, I, I'm saying, who, who, who were sitting on the subcommittee with me. I didn't feel the support really, but... Uh, as a soldier, I'm resilient, and remember, we're from the first uh, independent nation, so we will make a way where there's no way. And as a woman of faith, I believe in God, and I'm not a quitter. I will do whatever it takes to get to where I need to be. Um, I'm currently sitting on the school committee. I'm the uh, counselor liaison for the school committee. I'm also sitting on two sub, sub, two very important subcommittee, which is um, uh, policy mm -hmm. and facility subcommittee for the school. Um, I, uh, I it's it's hard to talk about myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would rather you ask me question and I'll give you answer as we speak. 
uh, since you didn't give me a list of questions to yeah, yeah. prepare the I answers. Know, I know, I know. That's my, my bad. Let's say it that way. So, uh, Let me say before, you, before I forget uh, that I always vote in favor of the public, of the residents. For example, I voted no to raise the taxes. I, vote, I was the only councillor voting no not to raise the water and sewer bills because we're not providing uh, a good enough quality water of water to the residents. So I didn't feel, I didn't feel it fair mm -hmm. to raise their bills. Although we need money to buy a new pump mm -hmm. or, or to fix the water, but I think we can find money elsewhere other than keep on raising taxes, which are already very high in Randolph. As we have uh, another candidate who's running for office also, which is Jesse Gordon with us. Jesse, welcome. Thank you. And I'm running for at-large uh, town council, same seat as Natasha, but there's five seats for which you get up to five votes. We're certainly recommending that you vote for Natasha and myself. Okay. Uh, the uh, five seats are part of the town council, of which there's nine members, so there's four district councillors as well. I'm running for the at-large seat, for, of which there are five, and you get five votes. Um, the, uh, the key purpose of uh, having the, uh, a, a team to mm -hmm. run is so that we can overturn some of the bad votes that the town council has done. Natasha mentioned about the schools, for okay. example. A couple of years ago, I raised the issue of having a full-time grant writer in, this, uh, in the town for the okay. town government. Um, there have been grant writers hired, and there currently is not one. Each department head has to write their own grants. Mm -hmm. um, so I called for a full-time grant writer. The school administration picked that up and said, yes, let's have a full-time grant writer, at least for the schools. And the town council voted five to four against that. And Natasha's, I voted yes. Natasha okay. voted to keep the grant writer. There were five votes to not keep the grant writer, which I think is really that's the definition of penny wise and pound foolish. Yes, it saved $83,000 or something like that, mm -hmm. which is what the line item vetoed uh, in July. But it cost the town millions of dollars in potential grants that would have come in for the school for all sorts of different programs mm -hmm. that the school uh, administration wanted. Uh, I would certainly be a deciding vote the other way on that one to make it five to four in favor instead of five to four against. Okay. As you mentioned about, you know, some of the issue uh, resident of Brockton that they are facing. Randolph. Uh, uh, Randolph facing. Sorry about that because I did the Brockton. <laughs> we, so, we understand. Um, I read, like, regarding water boiling order that was issued, I think, in, in July. Mm -hmm. It was on the World um, News Report. So what are the issues that is currently, you know, resident of Randolph they are facing right now. You want to start? You, you can start. I, I, so both of I, I call <laughs> it the water crisis <laughs> because it, it really He's is. He's the water man. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I happened to have worked for a water department a few years ago. I was an EPA contractor at the Tucson, Arizona Water Department, which faced a similar crisis. They had their entire system collapse, and people lost faith in the water system in Tucson, Arizona, and everybody started buying bottled water mm -hmm. instead of drinking tap water because just like in Randolph, the water turned brown, brown and smelly mm -hmm. and, and it was unpalatable even though it was technically safe. It met yeah, all the safety I, standards. That's something I want to um, piggyback on, Jesse. Mm -hmm. um, it, apparently, it, the water meets the, the, the state standard. Okay. It's not like going to kill you or poison you if you drink it. Mm -hmm. But between you and I, when you open your faucet and then the water is brown, yeah. you're not going to drink a brown water or a milky looking yeah. water in your glass mm -hmm. be between you and I. So that for me, uh, brown water or, or milky water, I'm not going to put it in a glass and offer it to somebody to drink. So until I have a clear, crystal clear water, to me, it's not a good quality water. Okay. And yes, there was a real crisis in July with the mm -hmm. boil water order. The, the bigger picture of that crisis is that the town council is overseeing a process of rebuilding the entire water plant. Okay. That's fine. I think that the infrastructure is very important. I think that the amount of attention and resources they put into it are clearly inadequate mm -hmm. because we've had this crisis like this. Um, starting when the water came out brown in my faucet, which I certainly noticed in my <laughs> glass, uh, I started calling for a public forum on this issue. They did have, uh, in September, in early September, a public forum at the town council, where mm -hmm. the town councils were informed. Mm -hmm. Natasha asked all the right questions, which were, what about our water quality? Is this safe for our kids? Is mm -hmm. it safe to drink? A lot of the other councils asked all sorts of technical audit monetary questions. That's not the immediate issue. The immediate crisis is, is the water safe to drink? 
um, a couple other town councillors uh, made a public forum, and what we learned at that public forum was this problem is not going to go away until the earliest 2023, when the mm. pumping station is partly completed. That means we have several more years where we have to deal with the potentially brown, stinky, gray, bubbly water, and we need to have regular forums to deal with that so that the people can know what's going on. Because mm -hmm. right now, we don't know what is happening. We get a little report. They call it the 2018 Water Quality Report. That's what you can get right now. It's very nice to know what the water quality was last year, but really we want to know last week what was going mm -hmm. on. So what I'm calling for now is that we make a public information available uh, on a weekly basis so that we can see, is the water okay this week? They're asking us, the town administration is currently asking us, just trust us. We meet all the state standards. We'll let you know when we don't meet the state standards like they did in July. Mm -hmm. What I want to know is, what I want to prefer instead of that is trust but verify. In other words, that we can look at the water quality data and see exactly what the water quality is so we don't have to just blindly trust them. Okay. And that's one thing uh, I'm going to continue to fight for. It's uh, quality of life over monetary business. <laughs> well, thank you. Like the issue, like the water issue, and I read also there are other issues like uh, in terms of transportation, mm -hmm. potholes, pot what what is the plan, guys? In other, for instance, once if let's say you get either reelected and you get elected, mm -hmm. so what would be the, the plan? That's why a great writer would be welcome to get us <laughs> some some more <laughs> funds from sure. state funding, uh, but because uh, I think uh, uh, in terms of taxes in Randolph, we we top we we can't we can't be pressuring the residents anymore. We can't be raising the tax anymore. Uh, they they complaining already. It's it's. Imagine we have all these issues and then we keep raising the taxes. So it doesn't. The balance is not there. So this is where I think uh, JC and I we um, we we really on the same page for bringing grant writers for the school and also for the town. We, we, of course, it's going to cause the town to hire a grant writer. But the grant writer, what is going to do? It's go after money in the state, go after money in the federal, and bring them to Randolph. So that means we're not going to feel the cost because yeah, mm -hmm. obviously it's going to bring ten, ta 10 times more than what it is costing us. Jesse? So that uh, I mentioned that I work uh, in Tucson, Arizona. I actually mm -hmm. worked for the, as an EPA contractor for the Environmental Protection Agency on a large grant. I was grant funded, in other words. Okay. We could get that same grant for Randolph and we could get dozens of other grants for Randolph for basically any issue. On the street paving issue, I'm sure that we can find lots of grants for that too under ADA, the American with Disabilities Act, mm -hmm. under the uh, Community Preservation Act. I know that you're a bicyclist. There yep. are bicycle <laughs> paths that are fundable under the MAPC and other organizations that we could you know, fund via state grants and federal grants for that matter uh, to do uh, better paving around town, both for pedestrian and bicycle access and for automobile access as well. In particular, on the street paving issue, uh, I meet people all the time who say, you know, my street was built 30 years ago, mm -hmm. and I moved here then, and they haven't repaved it ever mm -hmm. since. No. It's crazy that, that we think that that's okay to, to let it go for 30 years. I don't think we think it's okay. It's not okay. It's just that, that there's no funding for it, mm -hmm. and... and uh, we're going to go back to the tax issues. They're already paying so much. And why can't I have my street paved since I'm paying so much money in property taxes? In, in my water sewer bill went up. Everything is going up, but the service, the quality of service is stagnant or poor, if I may say. So then again, we're going to go back to the grant writer to go after uh, state fundings so we can do what we have to do to please our residents. But, you know, infrastructure is not glamorous. Street paving is not something that looks good as an accomplishment, but it's something that's really necessary. Like all infrastructure, we have to spend enough to keep the infrastructure up and running. And, you know, there's this big, thick book in the town manager's office that says here's every street in town, what its cost would be to fix it, and how often that street is used mm -hmm. by cars. So that they, they survey this every 10 years or something, and they make a list of, how important is this street, and how much would it cost to actually get it up and running? Well, that book should be made public, and you can't right now. You can go in and look at the book, but what you really want is a nice town website that says, let me look up my street and mm -hmm. see what year am I going to get repaid. Yeah. And I think that if we made that public, that's my first issue, is let's make that book 
mm -hmm. on the internet so everybody in town can see when is my street going to get repaved and i think people will be shocked that their street is not scheduled for 10 15 20 years and then people will be willing to say let's put in more money certainly i want to get grants to do that and there are grants available for things like that but making people aware of it first so that they can yeah. see what the problem is is the first step Okay, so as you're talking about that, what about the traffic congestion? Like uh, when I, for instance, I'm from Randolph to, you know, Boston. So, well, they, it's obvious there's an issue in terms of that. So what, what is the plan? What could that have we, been done in other areas? We, do, we mm -hmm. do have currently a, a, a study. We hired a firm. Uh, we're paying a lot of money <laughs> okay. to do a traffic study. So um, we have different phase, phases. So um, hopefully uh, Jesse will, will bring a, a better plan. Because uh, <laughs> I have to admit, guys, oh, I'm, I'm a baby elected counselor. So I'm, that's my, I've, I've known politics. I've been in politics all my life. All my life. I grew up in the house where my house was a headquarter for candidates or, or secret meetings. I remember a little girl when Papa Doc, you know, a baby doc, because I didn't know Papa Doc. I was born on baby doc. And I remember those secret meetings. I remember my mom hiding people in the house. Um, but but uh, in, when you see me doing a bunch of making a great decision or, or, or taking the right votes. I have a, a big team behind me yeah. where I go to, where I ask questions, pull Jesse, it will be 10, 11, 11 p.m., 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm not going to call him because he has a wife at home, but I will be texting, and then half an hour later, I will get the, the answer of what I'm looking for. So um, long story short, if Jesse is important for me now, mm -hmm. I, I, it's, he's going to be more valuable for me on the town council so we can really team up. Because that's how I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. I thought being uh, one councillor of nine orders, it was going to be like a team okay. to uh, sort of uh, work together and take votes together and, and, and take issues uh, uh, to the tables and, and work for the, the benefit of the residents together. Mm -hmm. But it seems like... That's my personal opinion. I'm not talking on behalf of anybody else. It's not what I'm experiencing at Town Hall right now. Okay. Uh, some people are more motivated to make me look bad, to make me look stupid. When I'm, and I, like, I love to play stupid. As long as I, as long as I do what the, the, the voters put me there for. So, um, you know, I think that the, the team aspect is one of the most important needs of Randolph. Mm -hmm. And right now, there's such dysfunction in the Randolph government. I think that's really the biggest issue that there is. The town councils don't get along with each other. The town council doesn't get along with the school committee. And frankly, that's the source of most of the problems of Randolph. Yes, we're a team, and we want the team to be much bigger than just the two of us. Mm -hmm. But that team, each of us brings different strengths. Yes, I'm the data analyst. <laughs> that's, I have professional training. I'm uh, I have a degree from Harvard University in policy analysis and data analysis. That's the strength that I bring is, is the behind-the-scenes writing and behind-the-scenes data analysis. Natasha's strengths are in touch with the community. Everyone has their own strengths, and we have to work together. As I'm, a, I'm a bridge builder. Okay. Yeah. That's what they said. I heard it's, it's not so important that we all agree on things, mm -hmm. that we all act in a civil manner. And I think that right now, I mean, you watch the videos of the town council meetings. It's embarrassing okay. for the voters to see how, how poorly they get along, and that's... What I'm really calling for is just civility. We are a team. We all have the interests of Randolph at heart. Let's work together to make that happen. Even when we disagree, let's be civil about it. Yeah, we're going to get back and talk a little bit more about uh, the structure in terms of the mm -hmm. government in, in Randolph. So I would like to remind all the viewers you are listening to Dialogue with the Candidate on MCTV, which is a segment in which the candidate, they come, and as they're running for office, so they can share with the public what their agenda and their plan and how they're going to improve people's life. So we have with us Natasha Clerget and Mr. J.C. Gordman. Gordon. <laughs> so they still talking about what they would like to do, what they would like to accomplish for the resident of Randolph. So now we're going to talk about the structure of the government in Randolph, like you running for CT, uh, council at large, so how your decision or 
how you work like is there a town manager and who take decision and how things you know work in terms of the structure of the Randolph we do have a town manager and uh, we do have some department heads mm -hmm. uh, that work on the, the supervision of the town manager and the town manager answered to all report to the councillors okay. and we have four uh, district councillors district one two three and four mm -hmm. and then we have five at large um, but it doesn't matter if you um, district or at large when you take the vote you take the vote for the entire town okay. but the only thing is the district councillors is not obligated to um, service the whole town okay. but an at large like me it's from east west north south i have to be available for the entire 33,000 residents that we have in Randolph. What is your take on that? Uh, um, the, the other issue is that there's an elected school committee as well, mm -hmm. and the school committee that has six members plus one member from the town council, which is currently Natasha, mm -hmm. that means seven members who vote on all of the school issues. Um, that setup is the same as the town at large. The town has the town council of nine members and mm -hmm. then a town manager. The school committee has six seven, if you count the town councilor, mm -hmm. seven elected members and the school superintendent. The school superintendent and the town manager are responsible for the executive action. In other words, like the uh, CEO. CEO. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> and the board is the town council and the school committee. Those groups have to all get along in order to make things happen. And what I see with the school committee, for example, the school superintendent makes the budget with the input from the school committee elected members mm -hmm. and submits that to the town council. The school committee decides how it's going to be spent, the town council decides how much money is available. Mm -hmm. But this year, the, the town council voted three times to cut the school budgets, which I think is crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, when you said the town council, it mm -hmm. wasn't the full town council. Of and, course. <laughs> and I want people to know that Natasha Clerget is a very great advocate of uh, education, and I always voted in favor of whatever the, the school commi committee need or the school system needs to improve itself. So, and unfortunately, we didn't have enough vote to pass uh, uh, the budget from the school. And this is where Jesse comes at play. Mm -hmm. So if we had Jesse, we would have had those five votes. And the same thing for some resolution that we wanted to vote on, some other issues we wanted to vote on. So we are lack of uh, voters who are looking out, uh, actually, councillors who are looking out in the inter interest of the people versus the interest of the wealth of the town. We want, we want a wealthy town. Everybody wants that, especially me as a council at large. I would love a, a town where money is not an issue, mm -hmm. but it's not the case right now. Money is an, is an issue for us, and we're going to go through more money issues because in the past there were a few... Um, construction or decision, a few good things that were, like a few good investment that were put on, on, on the town that are going to come and bite us very hard. I don't know if you just see, we want to talk about that a little on. Um, but uh, I think people come first. People, uh, well-being, people, quality of life comes before quantity of uh, our wealth. And certainly the, the school budget is half of the town's budget, so it's definitely the most important issue. And uh, yes, the, in particular, when you say people come first, that's true, of course. The kids come first, and that's, that is our primary investment. Mm -hmm. And you know, investing in our kids and in our schools is really what the town government is supposed to be doing. Of course, a solid education is going to give you a solid town. If your education system is, is not good, yeah. nothing is going to work. Nothing is going to work. But when you have a good school system, everybody wants to move. And you know what? If we had the perfect school system, people would overlook the high tax in Randolph, <laughs> the high property tax in Randolph. So we did improve. We're not at the level we used to be anymore. Now we're proficient, so which is good. And I'm sending a kudos to everybody who contributed from the students, the parents, the teachers, uh, uh, the, the, the superintendent and the school committee as a whole. Uh, uh, and all the schools uh, employees, you know, uh, uh, and the administration a as a whole, I have to send a good um, congratulations to them because we are no longer level four. People need <laughs> to know that. It's a perception. School in Randolph are proficient. Now we put, it's like, it, it's either you are proficient or underperforming. We are proficient. But 
like we said, Jesse, before we started the, the show, there's always room for, for improvement. There's always room for, for improvement everywhere. And one thing I want people to know, data speak, speaks volume. When you're saying, oh, I'm not um, putting my, my kids in Randolph Public School, I'm going to put it in, I'm not going to name any, yeah. any other right. city so. because I don't want to put anybody down. Mm. You need to look. Look. And when you look at the data at that other school who perceive, like, mm -hmm. supposedly is better than Randolph, you're going to see Randolph is way better or at the same level at that school. Guys, do your homework before you take your kids out of Randolph Public School and put, it some, put, put the kids somewhere else. You need to do your homework because not because they, they're saying that school system is better than Randolph, that means it's, it's really better than Randolph. Is we just need to promote mm -hmm. and, and like Jesse said, make the data is, uh, data is available for everybody so they can see. Because mm -hmm. saying it is one thing, bashing on it is another thing, mm -hmm. but seeing it, it's the thing. It, it's the thing. So um, November 5th, it's the election day. Mm -hmm. And let's do hypothetically, you both get elected. So two years. We have to. Yeah. If you want a better <laughs> Randolph, we have to. <laughs> so it, that happened, and two years. What the resident of Randolph should be expected, you're gonna be tackled, and you you're gonna do, you know, for the resident. Um, you want me to start first? Go ahead. <laughs> because one of one of my passion for the town of Randolph, because you guys must know, Randolph is the most diverse town in the entire Massachusetts, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We are, as a Haitian, because I'm a, I was born and raised in Haiti, so we can't, you can't take me out of Haiti, but you will never be able to take Haiti out of me. Um, we, half of the town residents are Haitians. Uh, and then we have a large um, uh, community of Asian. I'm not going to say Vietnam is over. I put all Asians all together. Asian. We have a large uh, community of Asians. We have a large community of Africans. Mm -hmm. we, now we, we, we have a growing community of uh, Latinos. Mm -hmm. My passion, like they call me the, the bridge builder, <laughs> it's like uh, to put everybody together. Because right now, you know wh what you don't know you're scared of? Mm -hmm. I remember um, uh, growing up, I used to have uh, uh, um, an African family in Haiti, mm -hmm. friends of ours, and I used to be scared of the food. <laughs> I'm like, until one day we were invited, and as of I have a daughter of a teacher, you know, you have to have proper manner when you are on the table. You have to finish your plate. You have to put the amount you can eat, finish your plate. Until one day I was invited to, uh, uh, my family was invited to dine with them. Yeah. And the food was so delicious. Not because it doesn't look like my food. Yeah. It, that doesn't mean it's not good. I, and I, fall, I fell in love. I, I can never remember what we ate that day because <laughs> I was obviously 10 years old. And ever since, I started to open more to other cultures. And, and that's when I, I started to learn about, I was African <laughs> at some point <laughs> before being a Haitian. So this is the kind of um, momentum I want to build in Randolph. Mm -hmm. So the curiosity. Let's go learn about the other before we be scared of them. Let's go... Uh, I ate things you, would, you wouldn't believe uh, in other cultures. I ate, I ate insect mm -hmm. in, in Asian uh, uh, um, cultures. I, I ate them before I knew. If I knew it was like a, a, such a creature, I be, believe me, I would have said no. Mm -hmm. But after I fed, I'm like, oh my God, this is so delicious. What, did, what is it that I just ate? <laughs> and when they showed it, okay, all right, okay, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not anymore, but it was delicious. You know, that's that's the kind of um, uh, um, community outreach I'm doing right now. I want to celebrate everybody. Like, I'm the one who came up with the Haitian flag, the parade. W imagine uh, so many Haitians in the town, and we didn't have a, 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 
like a massive Haitian celebration. We have today, for example, let me send a shout out to my uh, Nigerian folks. Uh, I like to call them cousins because <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Africa, you, you know, from yes. 216 years ago before we became Haitian, Haitians. So uh, today is Nigerian Independence Day um, uh, 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 celebration. So I would love to have like a big celebration in town, in town where are we raising the, the green and white flag. JC and I, we're currently working on a resolution. Uh, he, he was laughing at me because that was my first <laughs> resolution I was writing. He's the expert, but me, I read a lot. Uh, I watch YouTube. Uh, I, w I read other people's things. So I, I wrote a, a resolution okay. and when I sent it, when I emailed it to Jesse, I said, please don't laugh. But he laughed anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so we're writing a resolution where we want to celebrate all different cultures, whether it's Lunar, Lunar New Year, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, Haitian Flag the Parade on, on, on May 18th, whether it's Nigerian Independence on, on October 1st. Help me, Jesse, what do we have on the list? Uh, Vietnamese Lanterns. Vietnamese Lanterns. Uh, Epiphany. Uh, Epiphany, Venti Siete de Febrero, like uh, those la the sp <laughs> those Latinos <laughs> uh, carnival. Uh, uh, um, we already have established um, the the Jewish. Uh, I think it's well uh, uh, received. We have uh, the St. Patrick's Day, w which is well received, and I and I adore. Every time we have those celebrations, mm -hmm. I make sure I have an outfit that matches mm -hmm. the the event, and I celebrate with them. I eat the food. Oh my God, the St. Patrick's Day, that's when you're going to, I don't drink alcohol, but <laughs> you're going to have the best beers ser being served. We're going to have a lot of food. And these are things we need to celebrate. I want to say besides the water, the better quality of water and, and lowering property taxes, and th that's my uh, passion. That's what I'm going to be working on. A and also one thing I want to see, we have an awesome uh, fire department but we are lack of people who speak our languages, mm -hmm. people who look l like us. Okay. So I want to see more firefighters uh, African, more firefighters Latinos, more firefighters Haitians, more firefighters African-American. You know, I want to see more police officers. More, more For example, I imagine you go to, um, you have a 911 call. The firefighter came up to a family that speak Let's say Cape Verdean, they don't speak English or their English is, is broken like I like mine, you know? And, and we cannot communicate. We can lose lives over that simple little thing. But when somebody called you and you feel the accent, oh, you can pick up, oh, that's a Haitian household. Let me send my Haitian firefighter up front. We can send everybody, everybody contributed. Yeah. And, and, and kudos to my firemen in Randolph. They're doing an awesome job, working hard, and I wish I had more money to put in their budget mm -hmm. as well as the police department. But having a, a Cape Verdean speaking uh, um, firefighter showing up in a house where a, a Cape Verdean person had a stroke or any issue, mm -hmm. I would feel more comfortable. I would sleep better at night. Okay. And let me let me mm -hmm. echo on that that Randolph is the most diverse town in Massachusetts. Okay. Um, that's one of the main reasons I moved here, and because I met my fiance under the chandelier at Lantanas. Okay. But uh, <laughs> what we're specifically doing on this resolution is we're going to have a petition going around. We'll be sending it around to everyone we can find. Okay. Uh, to sign on to say yes, we want the town to officially recognize that whole series of uh, holidays that oh, we mentioned. Okay. Uh, you know, like St. Patrick's Day is kind of recognized and the town sponsors a, a parade. We want to do the similar things for each of the cultures that are strongly represented in town without any cash component to it. We don't want to, uh, no, I'm not looking for putting more burden, more financial burden on the, on the town or on the people's taxes. Not at all. I'm good at all. I'm, I'm an event planner by profession. And uh, for so long, I was a sales marketing back in Haiti all my life. So I work for the best companies back, back in Haiti. So I know how to go after funds and, and go after uh, uh, sponsors or how to market my product to appeal to sponsors. And thank God we have some good banks in town. They're looking forward to putting money into events in town because the last um, uh, Haitian fact that I had, I had banks reaching out to me. I didn't call them, they called me. So. And, and, and Jesse, I don't want people to think the diversity that we're looking, 
we're talking about, it's not only about skin colors or, or, or language, it's about also um, beliefs, uh, religious beliefs, because I've gone through many different churches. Now I started to bring Jesse with me to churches. He doesn't really understand the languages, but he enjoy, enjoys it because he, the rhythm, listen, you, you, you're singing, let's say, uh, uh, what is the common saying? Uh, 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 amazing Grace. Whether you're sing, singing Amazing Grace in Spanish, in Creole, in English, in French, it's the same reading. When the organist or the pianist or the guitar is studying, you know it's amazing grace. You know, when they said we're going to say uh, the Notre Père, mm -hmm. and you know, our father, I, I go to, I still don't know the, the entire words in, in, in English, but I know it very well in Creole. I know it very well in French. I know it very well in Spanish. But when I go to an American church and they, they sing the, the, our father who is in, uh, 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 who dwell in heaven, I say it in the, the language I'm more comfortable with, which is French. And there is nothing wrong with it. They know. Nobody is expecting for me to know every verses in the Bible. When they say John 3, uh, uh, verses 16, I know it in Creole, I know it in French, I know it in Spanish, but I don't know it in English. So when, when the pastor said we're going to say it together, it's okay to say it together in our na native language. So I always like to say let's be different together. Let's be different together. And Jesse and I, we've been proving it. And um, I need to send a shout out to one of, um, two actually, of um, the candidates for uh, school committee who are very dear to my heart. I want to speak about Mrs. Jahaira Lopez, who is a uh, uh, um, Puerto Rican. And the other day, Jesse, we, we, we kind of campaigned together. She took us to a Puerto Rican uh, 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 no, no, restaurant, restaurant, rest, uh, on, uh, because we went to help out uh, on election day in Boston, uh, and, and she took us to a Puerto Rican restaurant. Oh my God, I love my mofongo, I love my uh, pescado entero, you know, so those are things, and also I want to send a very great um, heartfelt uh Gratitude to Mrs. Ida Gordon. She's been the chair of the school committee for the past 10 years, and I learned a lot from Ida Gordon. And recently she lost uh, her son who got assassinated in, in Dorchester. And last Saturday, Saturday was the, the, the funeral. And these are the things that, that are important. I dropped everything. I had a few clients for events, and I had to refund the money. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I got to refund the money yeah. because I need to be there for her. Because mm -hmm. I saw, I don't have a son, I have two daughters, mm -hmm. but I, when I, I knew the boy mm -hmm. and, and we had some interaction together and when I saw him laying down in the casket, I'm looking at my own son if I had one, I'm looking at my daughters mm -hmm. if something might happen to them. Yeah. So the, uh, on the uh, issues of the diversity and immigration petition and so on, mm -hmm. um, I think that that really is Natasha's strength, that she is very much in touch with the needs of the immigrant community. Mm -hmm. um, when I was a child, I lived as an immigrant abroad. My mm -hmm. family emigrated. And I, I lived on what they called an immigration center in, in Israel, which is a, a country that's extremely welcoming mm -hmm. of newcomers. That's the sort of things that we need here in Randolph, because we have immigrant communities here just like I experienced as a child in Israel. Mm -hmm. They provided housing assistance, food assistance, job finding assistance, uh, all sorts of things. In particular, cultural integration. That's what we're talking about with recognizing mm -hmm. the, the parades. Uh, the, the government took us out as new immigrants, out to events around the country on holidays, on, you know, when there were parades and things that we wouldn't have known how to get to. Mm -hmm. That's the sort of thing that, that immigrants need. In order to culturally integrate, you have to have a little guidance yeah. and a little help to do that. Natasha is certainly a leader on that issue. I want to participate in that too. And um, I think that that's the sort of services that we need here in Randolph is immigrant services that show that we're a welcoming community. We are, in fact, the, the model for Massachusetts because we're the most diverse community in, in Massachusetts. We're the model for the South Shore uh, and for the whole state. And we have an obligation to live up to how should it be done. Mm -hmm. And I think that, uh, that I'd like to participate in that. 
uh, here in Randolph. And also, um, you asked earlier, what should the community expect yeah. from me? And this is something I'm already doing mm -hmm. right now. And then again, uh, forgive me if I'm like that because I was raised <laughs> that way. Uh, <laughs> I, I, um, I have... Um, S still in the community building because okay. when I when I when I'm doing a program or I'm doing something it's for the entire community I don't limit it to Haitians or to or elderly or to kids it's open for everybody I've been having a f free cooking class for every Wednesday uh, now we have it at the Spring of Water Church on, on North Main Street, 374 North Main Street, every Wednesday from 4.30 to 6.30 everybody is welcome I've been having Small kids, teenagers, adults, parents, I have men, I have boys, so wow. everybody's invited. And then uh, on Thursday, um, every Thursday I uh, give free vegetables and, and um, fruits to the community and it's open to everybody. And it's not even for Randolph only because my mother always told me uh, food belongs to whoever is hungry. You know, food manger pas <laughs> gemet. <Yeah, that's laughs> uh, uh, in Creole, yeah. manger pas gemet. The food d doesn't belong to anyone in particular. It, it's to whoever is hungry. So, um, any surrounding town people who, who are in need, they're welcome to come every Thursday. For now, mm -hmm. uh, we are at Powers Farm okay. from two to four. Mm -hmm. But when it's going to be cold, we're looking for, for somewhere indoors mm -hmm. to to be do continuing to do the the food distribution and uh, right now I'm working on um, uh, ABC ABCs of self-sufficiency -suffic okay. where we're gonna teach people how to dress up for an interview wow. how to write an, 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 uh, an essay a resume yeah. and um, proper etiquette so when you go to people uh, we, we're losing those values mm -hmm. living in America because we're so used to drive up a, 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 a fast food, get our chicken and devour it, and then because we're always running. So we need to teach people, uh, like you can find, you can make time to, you can find time to make time for yourself and to use proper timing mm -hmm. in, in life. So you don't, you don't go onto a depression. Yeah. You don't get right. too stressed mm -hmm. because. They created 24 hours in a day for a reason. Some people said, oh, I wish it was more hours. You don't need more hours. <laughs> Me, I, I'm a counselor. Mm -hmm. I'm on the community on a daily basis. I run one of the five most stressful business, uh, uh, which is event planning, catering, mm -hmm. on a full time. So, I, And I'm a, I'm a mother. Thank God my kids are adults right now. I don't need to change diapers <laughs> anymore. And I don't need to take them to school. They're all driving and everything independent. But... You're still a mother, yeah, right? When they need you, I still find time for myself, and I still find time for people. When some, the, the, what we're gonna teach people? When somebody calls you and you said I'm calling you back, you have to call back. If you can't call back, grab your phone, text the person, yeah. you know. And also, when you, what the one thing I, I, um, I'm sorry, I'm crazy, Jesse. So <laughs> I, I wish I'm not off topics, but I'm doing that for the community. When you uh, uh, out. Uh, with friends, and we did that the other day, but it's because we were we were eating and campaigning for candidates in Boston. We were helping candidates who were uh, uh, in the race. At some point, I see Jesse on his phone, Jahaira on her phone, and I was on my phone. And I'm like, guys, what are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> so let's put it down. Let's finish. Let's give ourselves 15 minutes yeah. for us to eat, and then we'll go back. Let's take a break. And we did take a break, and we did... Find time to go back and uh, hold signs in front of precinct and pick up people to go vote. And so, we managed to eat on my phone call too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so these, these are, and I wish they use uh, uh, salsa picante, those, mm -hmm. those culture, they don't eat pima. And you know, us Haitian, we like our <laughs> pickles. <laughs> we like our pickles, we are like our spicy food. So next time I'll do like Michael Jackson, I'll bring my <laughs> little <laughs> bottle in my purse. <laughs> so anyways, um, 
this is kind of uh, what people uh, can uh, expect from me. Mm -hmm. And they know my phone is public. People reach out to me in the middle of the night, it's okay. People, if I don't enter, it's because I probably fell asleep yeah, because I do sleep sometimes <laughs> or I'm in a meeting or I'm busy working because my busy on weekends, they know it's hard to get me mm -hmm. because that's when I, I host my events. I got to pay my bills because <laughs> remember, we don't get any stipend. We don't get paid at all as a consultant in Randolph. I still have to find a way because to be a good leader, you have to, to be able to, for me to teach you what to do, I got to be lead by example. If, I, my, my, if my finance is messed up, if my credit is not good, I can come and ask you to have a good credit. If I can't pay my bills, I cannot ask you to, or oh, how come you didn't pay your bill? So, and, and also homelessness. That's a big fight, and this year and I, we're going to write a business plan. Uh, I find some good program in Boston that I want to bring in Randolph, and, and unfortunately, at the government level, we don't have that vote yet, unless Jesse gets in. Uh, that's one more vote, because we have a few good counselors we can cut on to vote on that. Uh, um, I'm trying to, and I and I have to send a shout out to Envision Bank tomorrow. We're gonna uh, groundbreaking for a transition transition home for former veteran homeless. Homeless, uh, um, uh, should I say, hom homeless veterans? Mm -hmm. So, which is a big accomplishment, and and they're gonna take ten veterans mm -hmm. out of the street. So that touched me dearly, clo very close to home because I'm a veteran myself. But we have. Beyond veterans, we have a lot of uh, high schoolers that are uh, um, homeless. We have parents. We have all kind of homeless people in Randolph, whether we do, we see them or not. The issue is there, mm -hmm. and it's growing. And uh, I can't um, pretend that I don't see it. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna fight for that. So, so let, yeah. You so go let, ahead, please. let me address mm -hmm. the specifics about what we can accomplish in the first year mm -hmm. or two, mm -hmm. and specifically what what I absolutely promises better information between, better communication between the town and the residents. Mm -hmm. The water issue, I think, is number one on that. There's got to be more information about that. Okay. The street paving issue is another one. There's all sorts of issues where the communication between the town and the residents is just not very good, and that mm -hmm. needs to improve. And if, if the town won't do it, I'll do it. I mean, I'm going to be putting the water information on my personal website, jessegordon.com, mm -hmm. because that's the only choice I have right now. But in the bigger picture, what Natasha and I have been working on is changing the direction of the town, focusing first on the schools, because I do think that's the most important. Mm -hmm. And we, we wanna, we've we been trying to build some institutions to fix the long-term problems. So uh, this is one of the institutions. It's called the Randall Foundation Found, for Education. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we founded that in 2017. Uh, we were just recognized by the school committee for our accomplishments so far. We've got a couple of different programs. Mm -hmm. uh, one is giving out grants to school teachers uh, you know, when school teachers have their classrooms, they quite often spend their own money on classroom supplies. We asked around what percentage do that, and the answer is unambiguously 100% yep. of them yep. do that. They all yep. spend their own money. We reimburse them for that yes. money. That was our first program, and we've done a dozen grants already, and we want to make it that that institution is well known amongst all the teachers that when they spend their own money in the classrooms, they can come to the Randolph Foundation and get reimbursed. That's in, in the line with the grant writing aspects. We don't want to raise taxes to pay for these things in the schools. We mm -hmm. want to bring in private money to do that. We call our slogan with the Randolph Foundation, private money for the public schools, and we raise money from businesses around town. Okay. We also uh, founded another group called Randolph United PAC yeah. uh, to focus on uh, scholarships for students uh, graduating high school in Randolph Public High School and going off to college. We gave out four grants for the first time. And I have to say, I'm sorry, Jesse, uh, because uh, there were a committee, I was, the, I was out of it, Jesse wasn't part of it, but there was a uh, screening committee to read the essays yes. and then select four of them. And then two of the best essays were Haitian kids. Oh, big shout out. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jesse, I had to do it. But that's another institution we think is important. The, the high school has a lovely program. That's what we, we piggybacked on, is the high school has a program where you can have scholarships for the kids. We want to make this a much larger scholarship program for the future so that every student graduating from Randolph High School knows that they can get some help going off to college. Okay. So uh, from this conversation, I really admire the passion because this is what can make uh, not only a leader, but someone who's going to work for the public. It's the heart you guys put uh, explained from your responses to the audience um, of MCTV who's listening. 
And I'm reminding you, you are listening, all the viewers, to, uh, and, uh, to the show called Dialogue with the Candidate. And we are fortunate to have Natasha Clerget with us and Jesse Gordon with us. So we are about to finish uh, the segment, and it's the time I'm going to give each of you, you know, the opportunity to make your case for the, you know, public, uh, especially the resident in Randolph, who's going to go to the poll on November 5th. So... Uh, uh, to Senor Tutono, Jesse, you all guess. Uh, <laughs> I'm home here. <laughs> so I, I talked about how the Randolph mm -hmm. uh, Town Council should work with the Randolph School Committee and that the problem of the dysfunction in government is because they often can't even be civil. That's part one. Part two is extending that beyond the borders of Randolph. And I think a lot of the longtime members of the Randolph Town Council think that the issues in Randolph stop at the borders of Randolph, and that's just not true. We have to work with Braintree and Holbrook on the water supply. We have to work with the MBTA and the BAT on the bus routes, and I would like to do that. I'd like to have a negotiation with the MBTA to make sure that the 240 bus stays live and that the 12 bus stops more often in Randolph, and perhaps that we have a couple of crosstown buses too. Things like that, you have to have a, a community that extends beyond Randolph to work on those issues. Uh, we should be working with uh, uh, Holbrook, Avon, and surrounding communities about the, the trash transfer station and how to make it that it's, it's a tolerable way to do it. We've been trying to block it. Who knows what's going to happen with that, but that has to be a multi-town negotiation. Those sorts of things have been really ignored by the Randolph Town Council for the past decades. That they, they think that the issues stop at the Randolph border, and they just don't. We have to work with the state government on a lot of issues with grants. We have to work with the federal government on a lot of issues with uh, the interstate highway and the federal properties in town. Those things I'd like to work on beyond the borders of Randolph, working with the other governments involved and the other communities and the other agencies involved to work on the bigger problems of Randolph. And that's, that's my commitment for, for, the, for, for the Randolph Town Council. For the Randolph. And how about you, Natasha? What is the, the case? Everything Jesse <laughs> just said. <laughs> yes, because we do have a similar platform. Okay. But uh, me, as uh, an incumbent, mm -hmm. I can uh, add to that, look at my track record. And I know some group the, the, are, are putting together a scorecard. So <laughs> I'd like that to be public. So you would see all the issues I've been working on and the commitment that I put out there, my, my uh, loyalty to Randolph. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'd like to continue. And like I said, uh, a few key points besides the water, uh, education is super important too and uh, homeless, to end on homelessness in Randolph, and also, and one thing, remember, mm -hmm. Natasha is a veteran, you know, former soldier, we don't quit. <laughs> we will fail 10 times in, we, not only we don't quit, we don't lose any battle. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna continue to fight for inclusive, inclusiveness, uh, cohesiveness, and also I, my biggest um, challenge is to have a town council that is in harmony okay. with uh, themselves, our, or how, ourselves, I can't take myself out, and also harmony with the needs of the public, not to listen to like a, a small group of friends, mm -hmm. small group of my network, but to listen to everybody uh, 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 at large. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and also, I'm not the type of uh, counselor who's gonna come out when it's about to be election time and pretending doing a few things. I've been, ever since I got elected, the same day, I remember November 7th, and I slept on November 8th, November 8th up until mid, uh, midday noon time, yeah. <laughs> and that's the last time I ever slept so long. <laughs> I, unless I, I, can't, I can't take it anymore, I just took a few days of vacation. But I make sure I come back before school um, town council meeting or before school committee meeting if there's a, a, an important vote to take because mm -hmm. I'm not going to uh, do that to my community. So look at my track record and uh, I will continue to do everything that I'm doing plus working with counselors like uh, Jesse Gordon and other counselors who really have your interest at heart because there's there's nothing for us. There's no gain, absolutely. Actually, I've been spending my personal money to 
do programs because there is no cachet, like we said in, in, in our culture. Yeah. There's no envelopes to do events. If if you don't, if I don't use my own money, I wouldn't be doing anything in mm -hmm. town. So I want to continue, and I and I don't mind spending my own money. There's nothing uh, like no financial gain for me being in that seat. Mm -hmm. So it's all about you guys. Please, November fifth, come out and vote. Two names you need to remember. I don't care if, if you forget. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> I shouldn't say that. But I do want you to remember those two names. Natasha Clergé, Jesse Gordon. Jesse Gordon, Natasha Clergé for Randolph Town Council at large. Thank you very much for uh, your past uh, uh, trust because they trusted me. And, and, and it seems like I made history two years ago because I was the first first person to get elected the first time. Everybody always try and then fell. Even Jesse is uh, <laughs> he's the, the, it's the second time. Yeah, it's the it's second time. So I was the only person to just go the first time and win. Mm -hmm. Of course, thank to God and my voters. And also, um, I'm the first Haitian American female on top of it. Uh, Madam, you know, <laughs> Alfred Ravaino, okay? Because we, we needed, we had a female councillor in the town council, one. We needed a balance, and yeah. my voters listened to me, and we all sitting on two ends of the, pretty much two ends of the <laughs> town council. So um, vote for me again, and uh, I think I did, I, I'm hoping I didn't disappoint anybody. I know a lot of people have reached out to me for uh, affordable housing mm -hmm. or elderly housing. Unfortunately, in Randolph, we don't have that. But as much as I can, I try to reach out to other communities, send them to Boston, give them other resources mm -hmm. so they can go and get that. But I promise you, I will not fail you in, to, in terms of supporting education. Um, I will not give up on trying to lower your property taxes. I will continue to fight to get you a better quality uh, water mm -hmm. in Randolph. And also, I'm going to make it a duty to have more uh, minorities to go take the test for firefighters and uh, police department so we can have a very real representation um, of the community. And when we, that 911 call come in, we have no fear that it's not going to be any miscommunication. So thank you very much in advance for your vote. And I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty confident that uh, we're going to have a seat in the town council in November 5th. Great. So thank you, uh, Natasha Clergé and Jesse Gordon, for you know, being part of this show today. And all the viewers, that is the dialogue with the candidate. And we will wait for the next one. So have a good day to everyone. Bye-bye. Okay.